The Queen Space Engineering team is made up of three technical sub teams, the mechanical, electrical, and science team, and two logistical teams, PR and sponsorship. The mechanical sub team focuses on the chassis, drivetrain, and end effectors of the rover, while the electrical team focuses on printed circuit boards, electrical control systems, and communication systems. So at the beginning of the year, we come up with a generalized budget and split the funds up amongst uh, the five sub teams uh, based on previous years. This year, we allocated about two fifths of our funds towards the science team as we found that based on other teams at competition last year, we didn't have the proper system set up in place to make us successful. So the Queen Space Engineering team is built on students who have a great interest in the space industry, um, who are looking to expand their hands-on experience to complement their classwork. We compete in competitions such as URC every year because we believe that space is the next big feat for mankind and we believe that competitions such as URC get you out in the public eye and help expand Queen's University as a leader in the space industry. Uh, so we start preparing for URC um, immediately after competition ends. So in 2015, on our way home from competition is when our executive team started brainstorming ideas for uh, URC 2016. We start with the areas that we did not do well in in competition, areas that our rover failed in, or areas that we think we can improve on. Uh, we then take these designs, bring them in front of some of our senior members to figure out a game plan and a, a timeline for our project. Using this, we start building various concepts and take these into implementation stage. So one of the things that's really important in making a manufacturing design is making sure that the electrical systems can integrate with the mechanical systems and making sure that all the mechanical systems can actually fit together. One of the big advantages that we've had this year is having access to a CNC mill and a CNC lathe to manufacture some of our components. Um, and one of the things that has really been important for our teams to consider is how all these systems can be integrated together, such as working with Protocase this year. We designed an electrical control box that houses all of our motor controls, camera controls, and subsystem controls, including our Raspberry Pi. And it was important that we figured out the wire management and layout of the box in order to have each subcomponent fit together nicely. It's important to keep the design simple so that infield maintenance uh, is easy, uh, so that component swap out is simple, and to increase the reliability. Uh, the more complex a part is, the less reliable it becomes just based on the number of components being added. Our rover uses an A-arm suspension system similar to that that we have used in past years. The reason we use an A-arm suspension system is because of its ability to handle rough terrain as well as its simplicity as compared to a rocker bogey suspension. It was chosen based off of these metrics in order to reduce the likelihood of failure during competition. This year, we focused on upgrading the shape in order for it to be more easily milled, as well as weight reduction in order to make the overall rover way lighter. Once tested with our old mounting brackets, we realized the camber of the wheels was angled too much. This led to the design and fabrication of new mounting brackets. This ultimately led to the design of the final suspension. Similar to the past years, we use aluminum extrusion for the chassis. The use of aluminum extrusion allows for designs to be iterated very quickly. In addition to this, the aluminum extrusion also allows for a highly modular rover, allowing for easy interchangeable components in between tasks. Beach wheels were chosen again this year for their performance achieved last year competition. They enabled for good movement over sandy terrain, as well as suspension and grip when going off of drops and going over boulders. Testing done this year suggests that the continued use of beach wheels is a smart decision. This year, we have two end effector designs we plan on using during competition. One is a high torque clamp end effector that we plan on using during the astronaut assistance task, and the other is a three-fingered end effector we plan on using the equipment servicing task. The high torque clamp end effector consists of two clamps and a threaded shaft. Right hand and left hand threading enables the movement of the clamps in opposite directions, allowing the center of rotation to be stationary. Rubber padding is being added to the clamp end effector to add additional grip as well as cushion items that we pick up. Tools, toolboxes, containers, as well as other items have been picked up with this end effector and consequently is expected to perform very well at competition. The three-fingered end effector is made using a combination of 3D printing for the fingers and gears as well as machining for the palm and the base. A worm gear turns three spur gears simultaneously allowing the three fingers to close at the same rate. A similar design was used last year but this year's design was scaled down in order to provide better performance when gripping caps and valves. Samples are stored on a carousel mechanism 
that uses a linear actuator to seal each container. Uh, once a container is sealed, it's able to rotate out of the way, allowing the next container to be filled using the drill apparatus. The auger collects samples from 10 centimeters below the surface and is based on the Curiosity rover, collecting samples in 25 gram increments, which can then be sealed in individual containers. The comm system that we currently use is a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi uh, spectrum uh, communications device. Uh, it interfaces with our computer over just a simple Ethernet port on the uh, Raspberry Pi that we use. The range of the device that we have is about, in testing we found it was about 0.8 kilometers with um, no line of sight, So, and this is with interference, so we think that we can get up to about 1.2 kilometers or something like that uh, with line of sight and no interference. The robot itself is powered by uh, two seven cell lithium ion batteries. Um, they run at about 28 uh, volts when at nominal charge. Uh, all of that gets sent through a whole system that we use to convert down to various voltage levels. Um, so starting at that 28 volts, that powers our uh, comm system directly, but other parts such as the linear actuators, all of the servos that we have are powered at various voltages through uh, regulators that we have. So a 12 volt regulator, a 7.2 volt regulator, um, 5 volt regulator, and 3.3 volt regulator are all of the different voltages that we have running inside of the rover. Our comm system is the highest voltage thing that we have running in the system, as well as the, the motors, they run off of the same voltage. If we were to use a smaller battery, we'd be really limiting the power that we have in our, in our motors and the wheels. And we'd also be running the risk of undervolting some of the various components, uh, specifically the comm system. Motors that we use are just regular DC uh, motors, which um, are controlled by regular motor controllers which basically varies a voltage between a positive and a negative version of the supplied voltage. So that's how those motors all work. And what we ended up doing was buying some heavy duty, high current motor controllers that allow us to operate with those motors, just to make sure that no matter how much current they pull, we can supply it. This year, we really had to communicate with the mechanical design team, especially when we were making our protocase box. A lot of what we were doing had to be changed around just to make sure that we can fit the mechanical dimensions of the electronic box. Made sure that all of our routing and all of that sort of stuff worked well uh, ahead of time and we just had to work side by side with the mech team. Working with Protocase this year was really great. Um, uh, while we were designing our box, we had back and forth between the electrical and mech teams just to make sure that things worked. And then once we sent out our design to them, they sent it back with their own corrections to make sure that we knew that their machines could only do certain things. And it was very quick, the turnaround on that. And we made our changes, sent them right back, and within a day or two, they were uh, beginning manufacturing. And within, within the next three days after that, they had shipped it out. So it was really, really fast for us. The camera system that we use this year is completely different from all of our past years. The Raspberry Pi, the computer that we use, has a built-in specialized port for uh, camera input directly into the GPU. Um, this allows us to do very low latency uh, video streaming from the device. So one thing that we ran into this year, some issues with it, was that we were getting interference with the Raspberry Pi that uses uh, the, the cameras that go into the Raspberry Pi. And we spent a good few months trying to figure out where the source of this was. And eventually, we ended up swapping out the Raspberry Pi camera cables with an HDMI cable and not only did that allow for flexibility in how we can place the cameras on the device but it allowed us to still get the benefits of the low latency and high quality throughput through the cameras. We did background research into the current Mars missions and their instrumentation as well as a general knowledge of Mars, geology, chemistry and biology. Uh, the scope of the science task was narrowed down by the allotted time. All of our experiments had to be done within 15 minutes, as well as the price of equipment was a factor and the hazardous nature of some chemicals. The most important takeaway from the background research was learning the instrumentation on board current Mars missions as it served as an inspiration for most of our science experiments. On board the rover, we have a soil probe that'll test for subsurface temperature, electrical conductivity, and the volumetric water content. This will thoroughly investigate the water within the soil and the interaction it plays with the soil particles. 
Additionally, we have a suite of atmospheric sensors that'll test for wind speed, direction, as well as air temperature, humidity, and pressure. All of these tests characterize the environment and explain the interaction with the water and the surface and atmosphere. At the base station, we'll be looking for signs of life by looking for lipids, proteins, and sugars, as well as we will be testing for nitrates, pH, and salt to characterize the soil. And in terms of geology, we'll be looking for carbonate since they form in water. We have a sieve set that will determine the grain size distribution and determine the depositional setting. All of our tests have been performed numerous times and all the instruments have been calibrated. We have also completed a timed trial run to ensure that all of our experiments can be completed in the limited time frame. A uh, game plan for the science task is to collect soil in areas that have indications of past or present water, collect these and store them in a sealed container, do some testing in the soil and atmosphere on the site, and then do additional tests back at the base station. Uh, so this year at QSED uh, has been a drastically different year for us. Uh, based on the amount of experience that we've gained over the last 10 years as a design team, and also because we've had a lot of returning members um, this year and compared to previous years that have had experience in competitions such as URC in the past two years and Ludobotics uh, three years ago. Uh, it's been really beneficial to have these returning and upper year members pass on knowledge to some of the second and third year members that have joined the team as well as having a large number of first year engineers join. Also this year at QSET we were able to get some commerce students involved in the team which helped us allocate funds much more effectively than in previous years and keep a nice track on what we had planned for the year.